and I see, I learn. And that's where we begin. An estimated 80% of learning is visual. And the relationship between vision, visual processing, perception and learning is undeniable. Everybody will tell you that. 60% of children with literacy problems have an undiagnosed vision problem. And that's where a program called I See, I Learn can help. And to help explain all of that, we have three guests. First is Dr. Sheldon Salaba, Vice President of the Ontario Association of Optometrists. Welcome, Dr. Salaba. Thank you. And then we have Dean Younger, the Early Years Consultant at the Hamilton Wentworth Catholic District School Board. Welcome, Dean. Thanks, Larry. And Jennifer Hartman is a parent of a child who was diagnosed with amblyopia. And let me start with you, Dr. Sheldon. Um, Dr. Salaba, mm -hmm. um, amblyopia, am I saying that correctly? You are. What is that? Amblyopia is a, a poor vision in one eye compared to the other. It happens for two reasons. Um, the, it will happen if a child has an eye that turns inward or outwards, or it also happens if they have an imbalance in their prescription between their eyes. So for instance, if a child has a prescription where they are a plus three in their right eye and a plus one in their, in their left, the eye that's a plus three will become amblyopic if it isn't identified early enough. Um, that happens because the brain likes to receive a clear image from each eye, and if it doesn't, it starts to ignore the eye that it's receiving a blurry image from. Okay, so let's, let's bring this right down to, to language that I think um, our viewers will be able to understand. It sounds to me that amblyopia is the technical name for what we commonly call lazy eye. Am I right about that? You would be correct, yes. Okay, so, and, and of course we've seen children sometimes with patches on their eyes, uh, and uh, most people, certainly I would be one of them, uh, if I see a child with a lazy eye, uh, you tend to say things like, Oh, don't worry about it. They'll outgrow it. Yeah. Is that too facile a statement to make? I mean, it seems to me that there's a much more serious size to this, Dr. Salama. There really is. Um, in Canada alone, 15,000 uh, three-year-olds develop amblyopia each year. It's a condition that's treatable if the child is identified before the and treated before the age of seven. Um, the success of the treatment increases the younger they're identified, um, but likely half of the children um, who could be picked up aren't in that age group, so a lot of children are only re having good vision from one eye. Okay, and, and I mean, that, those are some startling statistics, and we'll come back to you and uh, find out uh, what it is that we should be doing, but let's talk to Jennifer, because Jennifer, you are the parent of, uh, of a young lady uh, whose name is Chloe, who um, has this condition, amblyopia. Do you want to tell us Chloe's story? Sure. Chloe is six and a half now, and shortly after she turned six last summer, she was diagnosed with a severe form of amblyopia. And at the time she was diagnosed, she was in fact determined to be legally blind in one eye because her brain had never established connections with that uh, one eye. And so as a parent, obviously very distressing uh, for you, it must have been, how did you detect this? How, how would you have known? Was it a question of lazy eye that you saw? Or were there some hints that maybe parents watching out there need to be on the lookout for if it wasn't that obvious? Yeah, that's a fantastic question, actually. And a lot of children do show symptoms of amblyopia uh, that trigger the parent to take them into an optometrist. Uh, Chloe was a little bit different. She had a slight turn of one eye, but it would just happen very quickly and return back to normal. And uh, I actually didn't think much of it for the first few weeks. And when it persisted, um, that's the point in time where we asked for a referral and followed up and got this quite stunning diagnosis that she was, in fact, legally blind. And at the time of diagnosis for her, her vision in the one eye was 20 600, so the large E at the top of the eye chart, she couldn't see that at all. All she could see was uh, light and motion with that one eye. So l let me just cut to the chase. How's she doing now? Let's just reassure our viewers. Uh, 
socially, she's six going on 16. <laughs> um, in terms of her treatment, um, as you mentioned, she wears a patch over her good eye for six hours a day, and that forces her brain to establish connections with her weak eye. And she's going to be okay? Uh, prognosis? Her prognosis um, is a little inexact right now. As uh, Sheldon mentioned, the earlier these um, conditions can be diagnosed, then the earlier the parent can intervene and the better the prognosis. So because we're so far along um, and because the eye in children is fully developed by the age of six or seven, we're really running out of time to squeeze out any improvement in that eye, although we are seeing improvement because she is so compliant. So. Right. Well, let's start, turn to you, Dean Younger, as a consultant for the school board. And, I mean, the reality is that uh, although parents are obviously with their children a lot, schools are with their children every day and, in fact, perhaps monitoring the learning uh, that should be occurring at almost every stage, much more so than even parents, perhaps, in some cases. What can you tell us about this? How, how does the school board react? Do we have some programs that uh, monitor? Are teachers trained to be on the lookout for this? What can you add to this conversation? Which and certainly, Larry, uh, the Hamilton-Wentworth Catholic District School Board um, is firmly committed to early intervention and prevention, and this is why uh, it aligns well with the ICI Learn program, in that teachers, especially in the early years, are trained to carefully observe children in the act of learning on an ongoing basis, looking for signs of struggle and or challenge, and then, of course, trying to anticipate and then attend to those concerns before those problems habituate or escalate. And that's why whether it be literacy, numeracy, or a physiological problem like vision, we want to attend to them very early on. Visual input, as you said, Larry, is one of the keys to reading acquisition. And when the reading input is affected by a concern, such as the ones we've been talking about here, the cycle of frustration sets in. And that's an emotional response as well, not just a physiological response. And when children respond emotionally to learning in a negative way, they tend to want to uh, refrain from those similar experiences in the future. So the earlier we can attend to them, the better. And this is why kindergarten teachers in particular are very keen at those observation skills early on. And that's great to know. And that's the ICI Learn program Dr. Salaba, what advice do you have for parents watch, excuse me, watching this program uh, that, um, that might stand them in good stead in terms of their children? Um, I would rec our current recommendations from the Ontario Association of Optometrists are for parents to have their children have an eye examination at six months yeah. and then again have an eye examination at the age of three and on an annual basis thereafter. Um, so my, my biggest recommendation for parents would be to make sure that they bring their children in to see an optometrist at an early age. Um, parents sometimes get the false sense of security that when they go to their doctor's office um, that when their eyes are checked by the doctor or the nurse in office that um, if they're told everything is fine it will be. And that's not the case because an eye examination has many more components. We're testing a lot of visual skills like how a child would see at distance, up close, how their eye muscles work together. Um, we determine if they have a glasses prescription and we also look at the health of the inside and the outside of the eye. So um, bringing a child in early would be the best thing that they well, can be doing. Well, it sounds to me like in most situations, early detection really is the answer. And this, I think, will be sobering for a lot of parents out there. I don't know how many parents really take their children for eye exams as early as a six-month stage, but this is something obviously worthwhile doing. Listen, we've run out of time. Thank you, each of you, for coming in and explaining this. And Jennifer, to you and to Chloe, good luck. Thank you very I'm much. sure with the care that you're giving, uh, she'll be fine. Thank you. Viewers, please stay tuned. There's lots more on For the Record. <laughs>